the hometown. It holds a special place in our hearts, filled with family, friends, and countless memories. And if you're anything like me, it bores the life out of you. A gigantic cage where everything is confined to routines, familiar places, familiar experiences. Do you even know how many times my answer to the question what have you been up to lately has been nothing, same old, same old? Now, please don't get me wrong, what I said about the gigantic cage was obviously just a metaphor for how it can sometimes feel living or even just spending an extended period of time in a place that doesn't really align with your goals in life, with your ambitions, with your interests, with your vision of what your living environment should ideally be like. It's obviously not a real cage. I mean, I could just buy a plane ticket and be out of here. But then I thought to myself, what if I did leave my hometown and never came back to live here? That would make me a visitor in my own city. And so for the first time in my life, I fundamentally started to think differently about my hometown of Hamburg, Germany. What is it like to visit my hometown or even Germany as a country? I mean, millions of people from abroad visit this country every year and millions more travel domestically. So what do they see in Germany? And much more importantly, what have I been missing all this time? Well, I started to investigate. For example, have you ever heard of the old Elb Tunnel or Alta Elb Tunnel as we call it here? It's one of the most famous tourist attractions in the city and what may come as a shock to my friends and family is that I have never been here. Even my friend Jonas, who only lived in Hamburg for a few years, told me he would always take guests here who would visit him from back home in the south of Germany. And here I am, born and raised in this city, but I've never been. Well, now I have. Let's check it out. Considered to be a technical sensation at the time of its opening in 1911, the St. Pauli Elbtunnel, as it is officially called, spans 426 and a half meters and is situated 24 meters beneath the Elbe River. Since then, millions of people have been using the tunnel every year by foot, by bike, by car, and back in the day, even by horse carriage. That's why the lanes were so narrow, it's because they were designed for horse carriages. Once on the other side, most commuters had to work on the many shipyards on Steinwerder. A cultural heritage site since 2003, the tunnel hosts events such as the Elbtunnel Marathon, art exhibitions, and even concerts. It really blows my mind that I've never even thought of exploring this place. Or did you know that Hamburg is the Paternoster capital of Germany. I didn't. That's what these things behind me are. They're called Paternoster, which means our father, or the first two words of the Lord's Prayer of the Christian religion in Latin. Because the loop the lift is designed in resembles rosary beads, often used as an aid in reciting prayers. Apparently during the 1930s, around half of the 600 plus Paternoster lifts in all of Germany were located here in Hamburg. It was also here where the very first Paternoster lift in all of Europe was opened in the 1980s. Well, at least according to one website. I did a quick fact check and found out that information was wrong. As the first lift that could be described as a Paternoster was actually installed in Liverpool in 1868. There are still a number of these operating today and some of them are even publicly accessible such as this one. All of these facts and information will probably have no effect on how I see the world but it's, it's still so interesting to me and I really mean that. And I know that if I investigate enough, if I explore enough, I will find things that will change my worldview. 
and that will change my perception of things permanently. So I decided that as long as I'm still here in Germany, I want to explore as much of it as I can. And going forward, no matter where I am in the world, I want to keep this curiosity and ultimately understand a bit better where exactly I fit in in the great puzzle that forms our world. I know, pretentious, but what are you gonna do? So after checking out a couple of spots in Hamburg, I packed my bag and went on my first trip of this new journey of, I don't know, curiosity and exploration, let's just call it. And that leads me to Beutlingen. Actually, I first arrived in Stuttgart to catch up with my friend Jonas, who I mentioned earlier. And together we went down to Reutlingen, which is just a 20-minute train ride further south. Located in the southern German state of Baden-Württemberg, Reutlingen is a city of just over 116,000 people as of June 2018. I was gonna call it a small city, but during my research for this video, I found out that cities of 100,000 residents or more are officially considered big, according to the International Statistical Institute. I will never disrespect a big city by calling it small ever again. Beyond its textile industry and some other manufacturing facilities, Reutlingen doesn't seem like a particularly significant place. Just a little while ago, I would have never thought of coming here. But I realized I was way too narrow-minded. Kind of like this street. Excuse the bad pun. This is the Speuerhofstraße and it's officially the narrowest street in the world. And it's here in Reutlingen, in Germany, the place that I live in. And I never knew. Measuring just 31 centimeters at its narrowest point and just 50 at its widest in February 2006, the Guinness Book of World Records crowned the Speuerhofstraße the narrowest street in the world. Except it's not. Apparently there is a street in France that's measuring just 29 centimeters at its narrowest point. So what's really going on here? Who is the real winner? I guess for now let's just go with what the Guinness Book says until we go and investigate that street in France. This sign seems to be pretty sure about the answer. Speuerhofstraße, narrowest street in the world. Actually, after 20 of these signs were stolen in the past, the city of Reutlingen decided to up the security level a bit and really fixate these in place. And here I was, thinking I could recoup the cost of this trip on eBay with one of these signs. Damn it. Since the street is not on private property, but city ground, it was eligible for the title. The alley originated during the rebuild after a massive fire in 1726, the biggest disaster in Reutlingen's history, where approximately 80% of all buildings were destroyed, but thankfully almost no one died. Now Reutlingen's number one tourist attraction, the street draws in many visitors every year, trying to measure whether their diet is working or not. Going on this trip kind of did something to me. I have been all around the world, from Tokyo, Japan, all the way at the east end of the world, to Los Angeles, California, all the way on the west side of the map. I have always been curious and loved to explore. But this trip felt different, even though it was basically in my own backyard. It felt like my mindset when traveling had finally evolved. I mean, I was always mindful when traveling, but this time it felt like I was finally starting to ask the right questions. Like my curiosity actually led me to a new level of understanding. It's not always the most exotic or far-flung places that deserve our attention and inquisitiveness. Because trust me, someone somewhere quite possibly right now is planning to go to your city, to your country and explore all the things it has to offer. This is, God willing, just the beginning of a much bigger journey. This, I mean, this is just the first video of this channel. And I'm not just talking about traveling the world, I'm talking about whatever question 
that comes to my mind, I want to go after it and find an answer or at least something resembling an answer. This journey will take us back to Japan, back to the US and many other places. And I encourage you to do some research about your hometown and visit the most peculiar and interesting places you can find. And make sure to let me know in the comments, who knows, maybe someday I will come and visit your city too. But that's it for this video, until we meet again. Curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, come on.